for us who have virtually grown up with Eddie Tumine. I knew him very vividly in 1979 when we came on the wave of victory against the regime of murder and terror and he was a young man recruited under Fronasa and when we were mobilizing the population to accept, to welcome, to embrace what we called Moshi spirit, the spirit of oneness, the spirit of patriotism, of independence, of democracy. Tumwini was a young man, clearly in the forefront of the youth of the time that welcomed us as a, a Uganda Liberation Front. Consequently, the rest is history. He joined the army, he went to the bush, he's credited for the first shot as a member of parliament, and to be an artist has a sense of creativity, and he appreciated music. Eddie was an accomplished, accomplished gentleman, accomplished soldier, accomplished patriot. But I miss him also on a personal note because I'm a cattle breeder. The bull, a breeding bull in my kraal of historical long-horned cattle of Ancole, especially the category of cattle that were left by the Vatrezi. That bull is rare and is in my cows, a breeding bull from El Tumwine who gave it to me. So you can imagine how saddened I must be as an individual and how saddened the country must be for the trans tremendous transformation that has taken place in social, economic, and political sense with the Tumwine's contribution, which would be missed. Looking at uh, or dwelling into the pro pro promotion or protection of human rights in Uganda, how best would you describe him, uh, especially during the last uh, elections and the time when he was uh, presiding officer in the Ministry of Security? I was a Minister of Justice and Constitutional Affairs, and I want the real the country to know in science, there is cause and effect. I myself, I was in the official car during the riots of 18th November. And a guy hurled a stone on my car, shattered the screen, clearly aiming at hurting me. And indeed he saw I was not hurt, so he picked another one. But at that nick of time, the police patrol came and the man took off. So what people really don't appreciate, suppose I had shot that guy. Suppose I shot him as he was picking a second stone. Suppose I shot him. Yeah, the minister would be accused of violating human rights. But if you look at the cause and effect, Eritmine, whichever reaction is criticized in the public, it was provoked. And once it is provoked, it is a cause and effect. If you address the effect without looking at the underlying cause, you have missed the point. Eritmine, who put his own life on line, was the champion of human rights but clearly in preventing the violation of human rights, sometimes you violate the human rights. Uh, 
what do you have to say as the member, a leader in the opposition? Uh, before I joined politics, one of the Bush war generals or heroes I admired was uh, the late Honorable Eli Tumine. Because one, besides being a, a liberator, he was a, a born again uh, Christian. And uh, eventually we met in the 10th parliament. But uh, we disagreed sharply. Uh, and uh, I remember uh, taking him on, on the floor on issues of uh, conduct, especially when uh, uh, one of our own had uh, alleged she had been uh, assaulted uh, by the late general. Otherwise, he uh, will be remembered to be the longest serving member of parliament uh, ever since uh, uh, this government of NRM, this administration of NRM, took power, right from the NRC up to the 10th parliament is when uh, it is only the 11th parliament uh, that uh, he never uh, surfaced uh, as a member representing UPDF. And uh, at one time I remember he had even wanted to take on uh, the title of the father of the house, just as you know, as a practice in the Commonwealth uh, countries, even in uh, the, the House of Commons they have the father of the house, the person. And I realized then that in the 10th parliament, he was the oldest member of parliament ever uh, in this regime of NRM. Uh, we, as a, uh, the legislative assembly, we shall miss him uh, because he is one person with the, who had amassed a volume of experience in the, uh, legislative uh, matters, but also as a regime uh, of NRM, I'm sure there will be a gap, given that he is one of those whose names are uh, inscribed even in the constitution, among I mean in the UPDF Act. Uh, UPDF Act, as one of those that are permanently on the uh, Army High Command. And uh, I also remember him for feeling bitter at the time when he was dropped. And I think for the very first time is when he realized uh, uh, how bitter it would be for one to be dropped without consulting. Uh, he, he expected to be consulted at that time by the appointing authority before he would be relieved of his duties. And I didn't go down well with him. And I mentioned even in the uh, uh, the, the, the remarks he made, the bitter remarks that could be the appointing authority could be suffering from some uh, kind of disease like hubris, uh, hubris disease. So I'm sure by the time he passed on, it could be that uh, among the factors that could have culminated to his death could have been that bitterness. So how best should uh, Okan Ugandans mourn the late? I think uh, the late, like others that have passed on, uh, will be mourned, uh, they will, will be accorded, I know, uh, state funeral, will be uh, brought to the house and uh, lay him in the state and uh, eulogized by all members in the house, I'm sure that will happen. And that depends on uh, the leadership of this institution, but I trust they will definitely accord him uh, a decent send off like many others who have passed on in the past. In the promotion of human rights in Uganda as the opposition wing, where would you put the position of Gen the late General Tumwine? The late General Eli Tumwine, uh, for your information, will go down uh, notoriously as uh, having uh, hardly helped to protect the human rights of uh, the citizenry. Because at the time when he was wielding full power as a minister in charge of security, is when we witnessed, this country witnessed wanton cross human rights violation. And uh, his performance at the time was the poorest. And uh, the utterances, careless utterances that he made may actually 
be a spoiler of his legacy, so to speak, even if I don't quote them. Yes, uh, uh, we, we want to, to extend our condolences to the family of the bereaved General Tumuine and the whole nation at large. We have lost a freedom fighter, a person of charisma. We are aware that General Tumuine is one of the few uh, gorillas who went into the bush to, uh, to come and liberate Uganda. Now we have lost uh, him and we are saddened because the, the, the nation has lost a person who is, uh, whom we cannot replace. And uh, what I have learned from General Tumuine is a man who would speak what he has at heart. He would boldly tell you and the candidate would discuss with you whether what he's saying is, is, is not good for you, uh, uh, for your ears, but he would say it and you, he would, uh, I would say exactly what he feels. So we have lost that very person. We remember just recently he, he said that he, a, a dictatorship is not good. He told, he, he told his colleague that right that when you are leading, you consult and you would lead we are with knowledge from the old circles of the nation. So if a man of that character uh, is gone, then it puts us very far as a nation, as a parliament, as people of Rubabo, as people of Rukunjiri. We are so saddened to have lost our freedom fighter and we extend our condolences to the family. Yeah, he said he is he's known to have told the President Museveni that Ngambanyenka I Ngambavi. He told him boldly that uh, meaning that if you are a dictator, you are not consulting other people. So a person who would say that, who would expect such words from other people apart from Tumine. But he boldly said it, and the candidate, and I think his colleague, uh, picked a riff from his statement. So we have lost him, and we are still standing, we are continuing to mourn, and we, we pray that God uh, receives his soul, and he, he rests in eternal peace. Thank you. Very, very sad indeed. As the country received the demise of General Eli Tumwine, we are all aware that the late General Eli Tumwine served as a member of the Uganda People's Defense Forces in Parliament, representing them. We are also aware that the late Honorable General Eli Tumwine was part and partial of the revolutionary movement that fought and rescued Uganda under the National Resistance move, uh, Movement and uh, the Army. We will remember him as an accomplished soldier, a professional soldier, a member of parliament that represented the UPDF, a revolutionary fighter of the National Resistance Movement, a gentleman who served his country with dedication, a family man, a father, but above all, a nationalist, a compatriot, and a patriot. Which kind of Uganda would, uh, did, did the late General Eli Tumwine envisage? He envisaged, in my opinion, a free society where civilian authority reigns supreme. The role of the military is to protect the territorial borders. And I am confident that by the time of his demise, he had achieved his dreams, his aspirations, his interest. And more importantly, the justification why he was part of the revolutionary movement that fought to rescue the people of Uganda from dictatorship. When we talk about promoting human rights, uh, what contribution would you share with the public uh, did the late leave behind? First of all, he sacrificed his life for you and me, the civilian authority, because a soldier is like a shield in protecting us, in protecting the country, in protecting the fundamental rights and freedoms of the people of Uganda. Because as a soldier, you defend your country. You defend 
your countrymen and women. And in doing that, it is through personal sacrifices. By the time he made a choice to join the army, he was ready to fight for the fundamental rights and freedoms of the people of Uganda. I believe as UPDF representative, he will also be remembered as one of those who participated in the promulgation of the 1995 constitution that has chapter 4 on fundamental human rights and freedoms has the longest chapter in our national constitution.